like the TripAdvisor of co-working spaces, and it's, they just got half a million dollars in funding at a $2.5 million valuation. So it's a huge company that she started, uh, and her partner is actually Sam Marks, who spoke last year. If any of you guys were here last year for that, he sold a company for $100 million, and he spoke last year uh, at this talk. So I have a feeling that uh, coworker.com might be that next big thing as well. Uh, so without further ado, the girl that has countless skills and energy and she generally wants to share it. She spent a week uh, on Nectar Island with Richard Branson. She's done so many amazing things. Leanne, the Queen Bee Beasley. Come on up. All right, while we get the set up, let me just say, Johnny says, I've got all the skills. I have no skills, and that's why I'm here today, to show you that you really don't need skills to do a lot of things. And I love that I'm following Hannah's presentation because, is it all working now? Because you've just learned, okay, it's not about the MVP, it's about the MMP. And you might be thinking, yeah, but Leanne, you know, I've got no skills, I can't, I can't build the MMP. I'm here to show you how to do that. So, let me... Wrong, wrong presentation. Ah. It's all right. <laughs> it's the old version. Here we go. Woo. Panic over. All right. You don't need to see my ugly mug on there. So coworker.com, we launched just over a year ago, and it, we've built it up from an idea that me and my business partner Sam had when we moved to Hong Kong. We couldn't find a co-working space. We were trying to find the space that had all the tech startups and people like us. Um, and we asked around for recommendations. Eventually, we got some in person, but there was nothing online. And we thought, damn, why isn't there a trip advisor for co-working spaces out there? So when we first launched, we were bootstrapping. We were doing everything ourselves. Um, we've grown it since then. So when we launched, the Financial Times called us the innovation to watch. We were trending on Product Hunt. We've had collaborations with Forbes journalists. And if any of you guys know Nomad List here, it's our API that powers the co-working space city maps. So... A lot of things happening with Coworker, but first, ah, oh, the sound doesn't work. Never mind. If you can hear that, we're going way back, back in time. So we're going back five years ago. I've grown my hair since that photo shoot. Um, but five years ago, I was stuck. I did not know what to do. I was just getting started as a digital nomad. And I'm from an advertising background. Now, in advertising agencies, you've got three types of people. You've got account managers that talk a lot strategy planners that think a lot, and then you've got the doers, the people that are creatives, the tech teams, they're the ones that are doing things. Now, I was never a doer. I was an account manager, I was a planner, but I couldn't do anything. So when I wanted to make that jump from a full-time job to, to being a digital nomad, I was like, ah, but I'm not a developer, I can't build websites. I'm not a designer, I can't design things. I thought that I had to, to be a certain skilled person to create stuff. But then I realized that's not actually true. What I've discovered over the past five years, imagine you are a builder, right? You want to build a house. Now, you've got two ways of doing this. You can take the complicated way, which is you're going out there into the fields, you're looking for the clay, you're building the bricks from scratch, you're doing everything the long way, everything from scratch, everything manually, and then eventually you end up with your house. Or you can do the sensible thing and just buy some bricks, put them together, build a house that way. So... Think of the bricks as your tools to be able to build things. You don't have to build the bricks from scratch. You just need to be able to build a house. So, and that's what we're doing here at the Nomad Summit. What I really want to do today and, and all the other speakers as well is just give you those bricks so you can build your house, you can build your mansion, you can build the palace. Whatever it is that you're building, whatever industry you're in, hopefully you'll get some tools that you can then apply in your business or your freelancing work to, to grow even further. So this is my roadmap over the past 12 years. It's messy, there's lots of experiments in there, lots of failures, but I've done a lot of stuff. And so the tools I'm gonna to talk about today are not really industry specific. Um, you can use them for, if you've got a software company, if you're freelancing for clients, if you're doing affiliate marketing, you're drop shipping, there's so many different things out there. So let's go forward. So who is this for? I think there's three kinds of people, that, especially if you're in this room now, 
that will get the most out of this. You've got newbies. So if you are a new digital nomad, and like me five years ago, you feel stuck. You feel like you don't know what to do. You don't know how to build things. You don't know how to create things. This is for you. Now, if you're a marketing freelancer, say you've got clients already, and you want to add to your portfolio of services, you want to offer them more things so that you can charge more money and increase your income, this will be for you. And also, if you're a bootstrapping entrepreneur, if you've got an idea for a company or you're just starting a company, you're growing a company, but you don't have a huge budget to hire people and you want to do things yourself, this is for you too. Alrighty, so these are the stuff that we're going to go through today. Um, now, not everything will be relevant for you, right? Like, not everyone needs packaging, for example. Not everyone needs websites. But hopefully, with the tools that we go through, you'll find at least one or two gems in there that you can use yourself. So, let's get started. Hacks for non-designers. So, design was a big hurdle for me when I was getting started. Because, like Hannah said, right, it's, it's not about the MVP anymore. It's about the MMP. And in this design world, when there's so many great things out there, people don't like ugly things anymore. But the good thing is, in today's world, it's just as easy to create good design as it is bad design because of some of the tools and templates out there. Now, before I show you the tools, I do have one thing to say. Don't be scared of Photoshop. Now, I used to, I used to be terrified of Photoshop. I thought it was a tool that designers use. That it was this big, heavy, expensive thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a Photoshop person. I can't use that. But actually, it's, so it's $10 a month. And what nobody told me was you don't actually need to know how to use Photoshop to use Photoshop. Now, let me explain. Introducing GraphicRiver.net. So Graphic River is a marketplace for designers. They've got so many different templates, over a half a million different design templates in so many different types of genres. The only thing is most of the templates are in Photoshop. So you just need Photoshop to be able to open up the templates. Now, I'm going to give you an example. How many of you here have a Facebook page? Now, the market, the uh, Graphic River market, it's got so many templates for the Facebook cover, uh, you know, those, those images up at the top. Um, and all you need to do is just drag and drop things into the template. So I'll give you an example. When we were launching Coworker last year, you know, as a bootstrapping entrepreneur, you know, you guys know yourselves, you're so busy with so many different things. Sometimes things like a Facebook timeline cover, that just gets pushed to the bottom of the queue. But you know you need something that looks good, right? So this is the template that I bought. It was only $3. This is how it looks when you open it in Photoshop. And again, I can't use Photoshop. I have no idea what all these buttons mean. I know nothing about all this stuff. But it's so easy. All you do is just drag your images in there. You just change the text in there. It's really that easy. And then this is how it looked at the end. So there's so many different types of templates on Graphic River. We've got, if, you, if you're managing Facebook or Instagram accounts and you want really polished images just to make yourself look more pro, they've got templates for that. If any of you do videos on YouTube, you know, you could just use a screenshot from the video, right? I mean, that's good enough. But if you really want to stand out in the thumbnail lists where people are choosing what to click on, they've got so many great templates for these YouTube uh, thumbnail images. You can get a really, really eye-catching one that people just want to click on. So it's great if you've got videos, but also say if you are producing music or you're doing podcasts and you want to pop them on YouTube as well for an extra channel, you've got no visuals for it, right? You can use one of these templates to be your visual all the way through so people have something to look at and you can put it on YouTube at the same time. Now, this gets me really excited because you think, okay, app design, right? Like, if I'm building an app, oof, that design process, you know? So many things to think about. It's not only the design, it's the whole UI, you know? Oh, I've got to put a log in here. Oh, I've got to put a link to, you know, the, the cart here. Where do I put this? Where do I put that? It's, it's a big beast. But there's actually all these design templates on there for apps. And so it's good not only if, if you want to um, build an app yourself, but if you're a freelancer, and you want to be able to offer more, more services to clients to grow your income that way, you can do app design without having the skills that you would normally need because you can use a template as a base. Uh, another example here of an app building template, it's modular. So even if it's not e-commerce, even if it's a completely different type of app, you can just use the existing design stuff that's there, tweak it around, move things around, customize it. Again, there's no need to, to design things from scratch anymore. And then, okay, I tried to find some examples of old ad banners that I did back in the day. 
Couldn't find any because, quite rightly, they have disappeared to the depths of hell where they belong because they were so bad. But if I was doing Google Display Advertising today, this is where I get my banners from. Now, if you just want to get your Google ad, uh, ad display things up and running, you just want something quick, you want something that looks good, you just want a static image, there's so many different templates on here. You don't need to spend money hiring a designer. Or if you are a freelancer, it's another service you can offer to your clients. Now, Mainly for freelancers here, if you want to like level up and go for those really big clients, you know, the ones with lots of budgets, you need to offer something that's like a little bit special compared to the rest of the crowd. Now, when you're designing stuff for online, you've got that safety net, right? Because, oh, if there's a mistake, you can just fix it. If it doesn't convert, oh, just swap it with something else, right? But when you're doing these kind of print things, there's no room for error. You've got to have it looking really, really fly right from the get-go. Now, I have got zero experience in these kind of print marketings, but um, except for this specific situation. So two years ago, I had a client, it was called Smart Mat, world's first intelligent yoga mat. And they were exhibiting at CES, the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. Now we needed a really, really suave looking brochure for our, our trade show booth to give to investors and media, people walking past. I had no idea how to do a brochure, so I had two choices. As a freelancer, either I take the money that they pay me and I hire somebody else to do it, or I just try and figure it out myself. So I bought this template here, it was $9, um, and then opened it up in Photoshop. This is how it looks. So you can see all the, all the layout is there already. There is no way I'd be able to design something like this myself. I can't design. But when it's just a layout, you just drag your images in. You just change the text. It means you can create things really easily. So within one day, I turned it from a $9 template into this sexy brochure that we have here that was printed off. And then you can see it on the tables on the sides. This is our trade booth at CES. But it wasn't just the brochures. Now, if you're freelancing, a good mindset to get into is, okay, you know, I don't know how to do this, but how do I do it? So I foolishly uh, agreed to volunteer myself to build the entire trade show booth. I've never done a trade show booth before. I have no idea what I was doing. I was living in Chiang Mai at the time as well. So literally from my, from my bedroom in Chiang Mai, I'm calling all these suppliers in, in Las Vegas at three in the morning, my time, trying to put all these pieces together. Flew over to Vegas. I'm putting, I was on my hands and knees with knee pads on. I got so many jokes from the builders in there, putting this wooden floor together um, and building this trade show booth. And I think if you, if you think about this logic with your clients, Always think, okay, I might not know how to do it, but there's always a way. Now, next one, presentations and pitch decks. Not just for, for regular presentations, but remember you can, you can save PowerPoints and Keynotes, Google Slides as PDFs. So if you have a webinar, you can use slides for that. But also if you want to do a lead magnet, say if you're in internet marketing and you've got funnels, you want a lead magnet. If you're doing an ebook, if you want things to be able to deliver to people that would normally be a PDF, you can do all this stuff in either PowerPoint, Keynote, or Google Slides. Now, I'm using a template for this presentation today. There's no way I could build these slides myself. I have no idea how to do this stuff. But again, I just got a template. This is how it looks when you open it up. I'm using Keynote, but Power, PowerPoint, Keynote, same thing. This is how it looks. All the sections are right there. And all you need to do is just drag and drop things in. It's really that simple. Now, I've told you now about Photoshop. If you think about Photoshop as being your life raft in the sea of, of templates, right? To get to that island over there, you need to be in your Photoshop lifeboat, just kind of you paddling away through the sea. Another lifeboat you can get is Adobe Illustrator. Now, this opens up a different world of stuff because some of the templates on Graphic River are in Adobe Illustrator. One of them is packaging. So I don't know how many people here are doing private labeling. It's a really easy way to get into the physical products market. But um, I know a challenge I had a few years ago when I was doing my first one was, I can't design packaging. I have no idea how to do this. You know? And I didn't really want to spend a lot of money hiring a designer because I didn't know if it would work. So if you are in the physical product space, check out the packaging templates because you might find one that, that fits for you. Next one is infographics. Now, I love infographics. And for years, I would see them. I'm like, oh my God, only the best designers can do infographics. But there's actually thousands of infographic templates on Graphic River. Now, like I say, there's thousands of them. And you could go through each one and, and you know, look for the one that matches you the best. But 
As a wise woman once said, ain't nobody got time for that. So I have this bundle here that has so many different images and templates built into it. It makes it so easy to build infographics. So this is what I did for a client. You can see inside Adobe Illustrator here. Again, I can't use Adobe Illustrator. I have no idea what these buttons mean. All I did was just copy the bits from, from the templates and paste them into a new file and move them around. Here's a close up on some of, the, uh, some of the things. Like I say, if I can do this, you guys definitely can because I've got no design skills. This is all in the template. Now, fun stuff. This is my team here. This is the coworker team. If you are my friend on Facebook, you'll see over the past couple of months, I've been kind of obsessed with making stupid images of my friends. And everyone's like, oh, Leanne, you must have great Photoshop skills. Actually, no, it's like one click of a button. And I'm going to show you today how you can do that. So they're called Photoshop Actions. Um, you can find them in Graphic River. And then I'm going to show you today how we transform Johnny FD from the suave gentleman on the left to the stormtrooper on the right. Let me show you. So right now, I'm just creating a new layer. I'm covering his body in paint. Ooh, la la. And clicking the play button. And then wait for the magic to happen. Boom. It just does it all by itself automatically. So you really don't need to know how to use Photoshop to do anything. All you need to do is have Photoshop to open these scripts, open these templates, and then boom. It's like magic. All right, now hacks for app noobs. I have not used these myself, but the reason that I'm bringing them up on here is because I think they're gonna be really valuable for two types of people. One of them is if you're a bootstrapping entrepreneur, you've got an idea for an app, you wanna build an app, but you don't have the, the money to, to hire somebody to build it from scratch because building an app can get expensive. Or if you're a new developer, you've got some tech skills already, it's so much easier to learn by doing right, rather than trying to do things completely from scratch. So I just want to introduce you to some things that I've discovered recently, which is Code Canyon. So if you think about Graphic River as the marketplace for designers, Code Canyon is the marketplace for developers. And they have, you know, like thousands and thousands of different scripts and plugins. But for today, the one I want to show you is mobile app templates. So if you are, if you have an idea for an app, Rather than thinking, oh, it's going to be so expensive. Oh, you know, I can't afford to do it. Oh, you know, I need the right people. Oh, I need a, a technical co-founder. Maybe just look on, on Code Canyon and see if there's something similar already that you can use as a base. Because even as an entrepreneur, if you don't want to play around to try and build it yourself, if you have the template and then give it to a developer, it will be so much quicker and cheaper than trying to do something from scratch. Now, I'm going to show you some examples here of ones I found that I thought were pretty cool. If you have a WordPress blog and you want to put it onto an app so you have your own personal app with your blog, there's a template for that. If you are an English teacher, I know there's a lot of people in Chiang Mai that are teaching English that want to break into that, that digital nomad area. As Hana was saying, it's so important to differentiate yourself from the competition. Why would a parent choose you as an English teacher over somebody else? Now, if you could offer an app teacher with a test for teaching, for a test for English at the end of the week for their kid, that, that gives you the edge. That makes you a little bit different from your competition. If you're a personal trainer and you want an app to showcase all your training videos for your clients, there's an app for that. If you... Um, John, you mentioned on stage before, maybe you'll find your soulmate in the crowd, you know, expand on that, do the uh, Tinder for Chiang Mai Nomads app, there's a template for that. And even if, say, you want to take on Uber, like there's proper startup style apps on this marketplace. So many different things. I really just, I'd say go to Coke, if you're interested in apps, go to Coke Canyon, just see what's there and play around because it's so cheap to experiment. Now, Website hacks for people who can't code. So not being able to build a website was probably the biggest pain point for me when I first started five years ago because I really wanted to build websites and I had no idea how. I'm like, oh, it's only for developers. But I'm going to introduce you. you probably, a lot of you probably know about this. Who knows about Theme Forest? Put your hand up if you do. Loads of you in here. So Theme Forest is amazing. So right now we've talked about Graphic River as the marketplace for designers. Code Canyon as the marketplace for developers. Theme Forest is the marketplace for all things website. So, so they've got over 30,000 different website templates in here. 
And I can kind of divide my life into two categories. My digital nomad life has two stages. Life before theme forest, which was like this bleak, barren wasteland where all I could do were really shitty things. I'm actually going to show you my very first website now that I built in 2012 using a free WordPress theme. It is embarrassing. I was doing affiliate niche marketing. Don't judge me. But I've never shown this to anyone before, but here we go. It is the spammiest thing in the world, right? It looks like a Word document. It is so crap. So before I discovered Theme Forest, this was the only thing that I could figure out how to make. And then life after theme forest it's like being a kid in a candy store because there are so many different website designs like it's so easy to build websites when you've got these themes available so this was the first e-commerce store that I ever built and um, using a theme called Cosmetico and again I had no website development experience I can't design I can't code but this WordPress template just made it made it really um made me look a lot more credible. You know, it was actually a drop shipping store for Nootropics a few years ago. And then here's a theme that I did for a client. Um, they were a big restaurant delivery software um, company in the USA. This was using the X theme, another good one just to like build really nice sites with. And it's really quick to do. Now, hacks for social media managers. You know, the reason I'm actually up here on stage today is because about two years ago, not two years ago, two months ago, I was on Facebook and this post came into my feed and it was a guy who was bragging about all these great results he'd gotten for a client. It was a guest house, actually here in Thailand. Oh, maybe he's in the audience. Um, and he was saying, you know, oh, I'm using this new proprietary system and software. I'm getting all these great results. I'm getting all these leads. The, the follower count is exploding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're really picking himself up. And somebody commented underneath like, oh man, that looks great. What is it? And he said, I don't give out my marketing secrets in public. And I'm like, boy, that is not a marketing secret. That is a tool called Instagress. So a lot of people think you see things that are working for other people. And you think, oh, you know, they must be really good. They must be really talented. They've cracked the code. They're, they're you know, they're, oh, no, they're using these tools. So Instagress is this Instagram automation software. And I'm going to take you underneath the hood here so you can have a look. You can talk. So if you've got an Instagram page, you want to have real followers, right? There's no point buying followers. You want to get those real people. Now, I was chatting to somebody yesterday, and she was saying that for her, she spends a couple of hours a day manually following people, manually liking the stuff that they post, you know, looking, you know, all the way through her competitors' followers, doing everything manually. You can automate this shit, right? So you can choose by, you know, what tags people are using, who, um, what, what followers people have, who people are following. You can, you can start following all your competitors' fans. You can start liking all your competitors' you know, things that they've posted. You can be really, really sneaky. Um, but it's, it's legal, it's free, and it works. And as long as you do it in the right way, you can scale your Instagram followers really fast. And like I say, it's just a tool, $10 a month. Now, animated videos, just because they're fun, right? Like I always used to see animated videos online and they, ah. Oh, I want to do that, but only like proper video animators can do it, right? But no, because there's tools out there now. I want to introduce you to one that I use called Videos. So Videos is like a, a, they call it a smart video animation software because it's not just regular animation. You can actually pull in um, smart elements into it. So say you want a video on your website that says, hey, you in Bangkok targeting people in their location you can actually put that smart variable in there that knows where people are uh, located and it pulls in their city name into the video so it's kind of like videos on steroids and you can either use it that way with all the smart variables or you can just do regular videos too so this is underneath the hood if you've ever built websites with a drag and drop editor like those front end ones this will be super easy for you to use because all you do is just drag in your text drag in your image add the effects it's super easy and um, so this is one that i did last year using videos there's actually a conference here in chiang mai next weekend called cu asia which is for the co-working industry in asia and they had one in bali last year it's an annual thing and um, so we did this little video for, for after it um and again, it's not the most professional video. If we'd hired a professional video person, definitely could have been better. But 
It's all about the MMP. It's not about the MVP. It's not about the big fancy wedding cake that you saw on Honor slides. It's about that thing in the middle. And so you can use softwares like this just to like create something that looks pretty decent. There's no way I could have done this from scratch. You know, animated things are, are not my forte at all, but with software, oh, it just makes it so easy. All right, now, if you're feeling extra fancy, you can actually, this is called videohive.net. So right now I told you about Graphic River, that's the marketplace for designers. I told you about CoCanyon, which is the marketplace for developers. Theme Forest, which is the marketplace for all things website. Now Graphic, uh, now Video Hive is like the marketplace for video effects. So there's so many different types of video things you can get in here. You've got stock videos, you've also got kind of an intro, intro things. So actually that video I just showed you then, where our logo appears, the coworker logo, that was actually not in videos. I did this with a, a, a template from Video Hive, but it's a bit more complicated. So this is the template that I did for the coworker intro. And then you have to piece it together in a tool called Adobe um, After Effects. Now, it's pretty easy. I, I just dragged the images in to like replace it with the template stuff. It is a little bit more complicated. Like, so for me, I wanted the background to be white. I couldn't figure out how to change the background color. So I'm like, ah, oh, fuck it. Let's just go with the gray background. Um, so it is a little bit more complicated. But if you have the time and you want to explore how to do more videos, Rather than trying to do it from scratch in here, I do really recommend looking at the templates on Video Hive, importing them in, and then just customizing them because it's so much easier than having to learn the skill of doing things from scratch. And then I guess if I want to leave you with one thing, it's experiment. So right now I've kind of given you a lot of tools and a lot of marketplaces that you can that you can go ahead and, and implement. There is no one right way of doing things, right? We're all doing different businesses. We're all in different industries. You, know, you can't do everything at once. But if you just see things, there's no such thing as failure, right? Like They're just experiments. And if they work out, great. If they don't, they don't. So one of my experiments a couple of years ago, I wanted to get into Amazon FBA. And so I was researching, okay, you know, how do I do this? What's the process? What's the steps? And pretty much all the different courses, all the different blogs, they all tell you, okay, whatever you do, don't use spatulas. We're going to use spatulas as an example here, but definitely don't do them because it's too saturated. That'd be stupid. You'd be crazy. So two weeks later, I had 3,000 spatulas being made at a, a warehouse in China. Because I'm like, you know what? I just want to learn how it works. And I spent so much time trying to think of what product to do with Amazon FBA I just couldn't decide. So I'm like, oh, I just want to learn the process. So I got these spatulas made, ended up on Amazon. And did I make money? No, I pretty much just about broke even. But I learned so much stuff in that. It was like the best free experience, learning course, whatever that I could have done. You know, you're learning about how to get a factory, how to do the negotiating, how to export, how to do customs. So even if you do something that you know probably won't make you money, there's nothing wrong with that because you can learn so much in the process that can take you to that next level. And it's not just about learning, it's also about having fun. So with these spatulas, I bought the domain sexyspatula.com and I created this little baby here. Um, because I thought, why not? You know, I, I think it's funny. So, and you know, there was no need to do this. You know, there was, it's, it's not going to sell. I'm not going to sell anymore because I have this sexy spatula website. But it was fun, you know? And because you've got these, because of Theme Forest, because of all these tools that you have, you can just have fun doing things. There's no need to be boring and just choose that one idea and make it happen. Just experiment and see, see what works. All right, so don't reinvent the wheel. You can just redesign it. And there's this quote, right? And I'm towards the end of a presentation right now. Don't worry, I won't ramble much further. So this quote, you see it on Instagram all the time. The travel bloggers love it, right? Hashtag grateful, hashtag blessed. But, and it makes it seem like the road less traveled is the best road, right? It makes it seem like the road less traveled is, is where the adventure is and where the excitement is. And it's, it's where there's a, a rainbow with a pot of gold at the end. But actually, no, the road less traveled is a dirty swamp. It's full of potholes. It's going to take you ages to get there. And if you have a goal in mind, if you have a destination, you don't want to be taking this road because this road less traveled sucks, right? You want to go on that nice paved highway to success. So I'd say ignore those travel bloggers with those quotes. Go with this one. So Steve Jobs quoted Picasso when he said, good artists copy, great artists steal. And if it's good enough for Steve Jobs and Apple, then I'd say it's good enough for all of us. 
Thank you for listening. And my name is Leanne. If you want to reach me, here's my contact details. Thank you.